Hey, what's good, people? CJ Williams for Culturalist Theory, here with another list for your viewing pleasure. With a career spanning more than 30 years now, Busta Rhymes has been dropping jewels and party jams since he was a teenager. First debuting with his group, Leaders of the New School, in 1991, Busta Rhymes has been featured on hundreds of songs and has dropped a total of 10 studio albums. With that said, we will be ranking his albums from worst to first, but we are not counting the limited release, Download Only Year of the Dragon from 2012. If you did happen to to hear it, let us know what you thought about it and where it would rank in the comments below. This list will also not include any EPs, mixtapes, or collaboration projects. Remember, give this video a thumbs up and a comment if you like what you see. Subscribe and super thanks if you love it. Now that that's out of the way, let's go down the line and rank the catalog of everyone's favorite Dungeon Dragon. Number nine, back on my BS. Leave off the first three words of this album title and that pretty much describes what you're getting here. After numerous delays and yet another label change, more on that as we go, this was his sole offering under Universal Motown in the spring of 2009. Did the fact that this album didn't even go gold have something to do with that? Probably. Thing is, there's nothing within back on my BS that slaps like any of his previous hits. Respect My Conglomerate featuring Lil Wayne and Jada Kiss is all right, as well as Decision featuring Jamie Foxx, Mary J. Blige, and Common. But everything else on here, it ain't it. Hustler's Anthem 09 featuring T-Pain was a perfect example of why Jay-Z called for the death of autotune that same year. Sugar was his attempt to holler at the ladies, but fell completely flat. A-Rab Money was the biggest single from the project, but that buzz fizzled quickly. Hey, at least there weren't endless skits littered throughout to make the album even longer. Matter of fact, let's just move on. Number eight, Anarchy. Busta seemed to have fallen into a hot, cold, hot, cold album release pattern. Following 1998's Extinction Level event, Anarchy dropped in the summer of 2000 and served as his final studio album with Elektra. We're pretty sure you can tell which cycle this joint fell into by its position on this list. Clocking in at almost 80 minutes long, the album feels like a contract fulfillment project. Boasting only two singles, Get Out and Fire, it's easy to see why this album is lost in the stacks. The heist featuring Rock Marciano and Wu-Tang favorites Ghostface Killer and Raekwon is their Ocean's Eleven fantasy on wax, which is only decent because of the great production by Large Professor. Inspired by Biggie's 1994 album track Respect, How Much We Grew is a Busta come up story giving rare insight to the man born Trevor Smith Jr. Leaper track We Coming Through produced by DJ Scratch is a thumper begging to be sampled by your favorite rapper today. Make Noise featuring Lenny Kravitz is their attempt to mix rock and rap, similar to how Limp Bizkit and Method Man did on 1999's In Together Now with far less impressive results. Sure, this album did eventually go platinum, but even the likes of Jay Dilla, Swiss Beats, DMX, and even Jay-Z showing up on Anarchy couldn't save it. Number seven, It Ain't Safe No More. Arriving late 2002, It Ain't Safe No More served as Busta Rhymes' last of two albums with Jay Records. It also serves as the final in a second string of consecutive releases following 2001's Genesis and the aforementioned Anarchy from 2000. Busta was stretching himself thin by the time this came out, as it was yet another 80-minute, 19-track album that was a sharp turn away from the positive momentum he built up just a year prior. Easily the star of this collection was the second of only two singles released, I Know What You Want, featuring Mariah Carey and the Flip Mode Squad. By reaching number three on the US Billboard 100, it helped the album reach gold status. Lead single Make It Clap with Spliff Star and its remix featuring Sean Paul and Spliff once again are still good spins two decades later. Take It Off Part 2 sounds like the predecessor to A Rap Money but in a good way and Call the Ambulance featuring Rampage is pretty solid too. However, the jewels Buster dropped and the struggle will be lost, are lost, pun intended, amongst an awful track and hook courtesy of Rick Rock and Carl Thomas, respectively. All else remaining is straight album filler. Buster would go on a nearly four year break after this disappointing effort to return with a new look, more concentrated sound, and overall much stronger project. Also in 2004, Buster Rhymes would appear in an EA game super popular wrestling slash fighting video game, Def Jam Fight for New York, which was quite appropriate for the Flatbush Brooklyn native. Did you have this game when it came out? Did you play as old Buster Bus? Drop a comment or two about your memories from that down below. Number six, Extinction Level Event, The Final World Front. Capping off what would be his first three consecutive album run in as many years, ELE dropped in December of 1998 amongst a crowded hip hop release schedule. You most certainly had to be bringing the heat in order to stand out at that time and Busta was lit. 
Blasting off with album cuts Everybody Rise and Against All Odds featuring Flip Mode Squad. Swiss Beats blessed ELE with the bangers Tear the Roof Off and Just Give It To Me Raw. Check out Is They Wildin' With Us and Getting Rowdy With Us, where Busta sped up his flow to keep up with Mystical. Party is going on over here and Hot Shit Making You Bounce both live up to their names. Then we have the singles Give Me Some More and the Billboard Hip Hop and R&B track topper What's It Gonna Be featuring Janet, Miss Jackson If You're Nasty. The song also peaked at number three on the Billboard Hot 100s. The video for the song supposedly cost nearly two million to produce and it only takes one look to see why. ELE earned Busta Rhymes three Grammy Award nominations, a third straight platinum plaque, and is an overall solid body of work. Number five, The Big Bang. Just when we had feared one of hip hop's most charismatic performers had fallen off, Busta Rhymes would return in the summer of 06 with his only effort to debut atop the Billboard 100, The Big Bang. He was refreshed with a renewed flow, a Caesar cut replacing the locks, and a lot more buff than before. Busta brought in a ton of big names including Stevie Wonder, Dr. Dre, Nas, Timberland, and more to help him avoid being the same person he described in the album's finale, amply titled Legend of the Fall Offs. Joints like New York Shit, Touch It, and Cocaina were exactly what we needed to remind us why we love Busta Rhymes so much in the first place. Completely void of skits or a bloated track list, in short, if we could simply remove how we do it over here, I'll do it all and I love my bitch, this album would easily rank higher on the list. Unfortunately, The Big Bang turned out to be his lone album with Aftermath. With Dr. Dre executive producing the album and working on eight of the 15 tracks, it was bound to be great. Just imagine if they had been able to continue working together to produce a follow-up project. Man, we can dream, can't we? Number four, Genesis. Busta's fifth album lands at the number four spot on our list, and to be honest, depending on how we're feeling that day, it could swap places with number three with ease. A long track list handled by a plethora of producers is what you've come to expect from a Busta Rhymes project, and Genesis delivers just that. Pete Rock slides through on Shut Em Down 2002, and Dr. Dre is responsible for all the head nods on the lead single Break Your Neck. Being that this album dropped at the tail end of 2001, it was pretty much a requirement to have at least two Neptune tracks to even stand a chance of being hot. So with that in mind, we get As I Come Back and What It Is featuring Khalees. Also, if you either bought a later pressing of the album or just listen online, you get past the Cavassier part two featuring Diddy and Pharrell himself. The first half of Genesis is definitely the stronger of the two, but don't sleep on the hilarious skit at the end of Ass on Your Shoulders with a faux Miss Cleo offering her world famous tarot card readings. Classic. All right, so like we just mentioned, the Neptunes were the keys to many artists' success in 2001 and beyond. They crafted tracks for Luda, Missy, Snoop, Justin Timberlake, Khalees, and that's just scratching the surface. Hey, what do y'all think? Should we do a list of the top 10 Neptunes tracks from the 2000s? What songs would you have on that list? Drop a comment down below to let us know if you want to see that. Okay. Back to the list. Number three, Extinction Level Event 2, The Wrath of God. Returning from his longest break in between projects yet, Busta Rhymes entered his fourth decade in the game on the hot album cycle with 2020's ELE 2. With comedian Chris Rock serving as the album's host, Busta's time off has served him well, rhyming with fierce intensity throughout. Check out joints like the self-sampling True Indeed, produced by DJ Premier, Czar featuring M.O.P., and the album's title track for starters. Out of My Mind is an absolute thumper, making a great use of the Belle Bib DeVoe classic Poison. Likewise, for the Kendrick Lamar assisted look over your shoulders, featuring a young Michael Jackson's I'll Be There vocal sprinkled in for good measure. Longtime collaborator Q-Tip appears for the first time on a Buster project since 06's Big Bang with Don't Go. Hey, real talk, we need those two to just go ahead and make a full on collaboration album. Tip, Buster, if y'all hear us, we need that album. We also get a sequel to 2002's I Know What You Want in Where I Belong featuring Mariah Carey, which has classic written all over it. ELE 2 serves as Buster's debut on his own imprint conglomerate and peaked at number seven and number four on the Billboard 200s and hip hop and R&B charts respectively. For all you super fans out there, there's also a reloaded version of the album with four extra tracks and a deluxe edition which adds another four songs, equaling out to 30 tracks at almost two full hours. If there's another Buster LP down the line, hopefully it builds on all the things he got right with this one. 
Number two, The Coming. Ah yes, the runner up on this list, we have the one that started it all for Mr. Buster Rhymes, appropriately titled The Coming. Dropping on March 26, 1996, Buster's debut had all the makings of a proper debut LP in the mid 90s. Powerful first single with a video directed by Hype Williams, check. Follow up party single with an R&B hook, check. Posse cut with present day crew, bingo. Raw rapid fire flows with beats to keep you grooving, Check again. Nearly every track on The Coming brings the heat. Wu Ha is the song that we all know and love to this day. It's a party featuring 90s duo Jeanne was a little something for the ladies to enjoy. Then we have album tracks like Everything Remains Raw, Ill Vibe featuring Q-Tip, and an eight minute long whole damn crew joint flip mode squad meets death squad that were sure to keep your systems bumping. Interesting fact, there was a song featuring the Notorious B.I.G. titled The Ugliest produced by Jay Dilla that was supposed to appear on the album but was omitted due to the obvious subliminal shots at Tupac from being on the track. YouTube it and see what you think of it yourself and let us know. The Coming would earn the first of many platinum plaques and Grammy Award noms that Bus a Bus would receive throughout his storied career. Number one, When Disaster Strikes. This should come as no surprise as When Disaster Strikes features the most recognizable hit of his whole career, Put Your Hands Where My Eyes Can See, with an equally memorable video to go with it. Put all your hands where my eyes can see. Straight buck violent in the place to be. If you really want to party with me. Then he followed that up with single number two, and it's even more outrageous video for Dangerous, which is absolutely ridiculous and hilarious at the same time. A big opportunity was missed though by not releasing one featuring Erica Badu as a single. It had the perfect makings of a hot radio ready record with both artists being on fire at the time the album was released. However, there was one final single, non-album track, Fire It Up Remix. While the song was certainly a hit, the video was nowhere near as zany as the former releases. Deep album cuts include a young and unknown at the time, Anthony Hamilton, on Things We Be Doing For Money Part 2. We Could Take It Outside, featuring the ubiquitous Flip Mode Squad, and the sure to get you up out of your chair rhymes galore. At 18 tracks long, yes, there are some throwaways, including Survival Hungry and Get Off My Block, but at the end of the day, when Disaster Strike did everything it was supposed to do, avoid the sophomore slump, top the Billboard Hip Hop and R&B chart, and go on to become a Platinum Plus smash and Busta Rhymes catalog that would stand the test of time enough said all right that's gonna wrap it up for this list here for buster rhymes and as always we want to know do we get it right what would your ranking look like drop your thoughts down in the comments below go ahead and hit those like and subscribe buttons if you haven't already it's your man cj williams signing off we'll catch you on the next one